Well, since we're not getting a Mario Kart 9 anytime soon, I'm back and I've got your back. Today on the Genovision, we're reviewing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, a game previously released on the Wii U, now on the Switch. Not a bad move from Nintendo, considering it's now the best-selling Switch game, selling 62 million copies compared to the Wii U's 8, completely blowing it out of the water. Just to be clear, we are reviewing both the base game and its DLC. We'll be reviewing the entire base game first, then the DLC. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Lux takes all the characters you know and love from the Mario franchise and a handful from others and puts them onto go-kart where they'll race, glide, and swim against each other on various Mario-themed racetracks. The staple of the game is its anti-gravity mechanic, allowing for carts to race on walls or even upside down. It also allows you to get speed boosts by bumping into other players and certain obstacles. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe does differ a bit from its predecessor. Namely, it includes the DLC tracks and characters from the Wii U version for no extra cost. Cost. And you can now hold two items instead of just one. There's this new turbo boost and oh yeah, actual battle arenas. More on that later. The first thing I'll bring up about Mario Kart 8 are the courses, because they are just an absolute delight. The game as a whole looks spectacular. The visuals here really are top notch, with the atmospheres really being nailed on each one. Mario Kart Stadium opens the game strong, with its nighttime setting, helicopters and fireworks in the sky packed to the brim with spectators, really making the race feel momentous. But then you have Luigi. Luigi's Mansion with its haunted, gloomy vibe, Dolphin Shoals with its lush underwater track and tropical features, and Bowser's Castle, this fire and brimstone map with a really imposing feel to it. Our favorite of the bunch is probably Mount Wario. It starts with you jumping out of this goofy looking aircraft, racing on a snowy hill, going through an icy cave, weaving through a forest, and then going down these little ski courses. Definitely a standout of the title. You even have tributes to other games like Excite Bike, you have some F Zero tracks with its constant speed boosts to replicate the games, an Animal Crossing village showcasing recognizable locations from the franchise, and a track where you're just going through Hyrule Castle. Some really fun ideas going on here, and we dig it. And of course, you can't forget the retro tracks, and they really went out of their way to make them feel fresh and new. Aside from the improved graphics and added detail which breathes more life into them, they've actually been modified to fit in with the whole anti-gravity thing they've got going on. They really went above and beyond just taking a bunch of old courses and tweaking the graphics a bit. They feel familiar, but new at the same time. With each course coming with its own twists, turns, obstacles, and aesthetics, they all manage to keep the game interesting, and the tight, responsive controls ensure a fun and solid experience as you weave through the race. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe maintains the series' extensive customization. The variety of Mario characters you know and love, as well as various kart bodies, wheels, and gliders to pick from and unlock as you play the game. And yes, they brought back the Mercedes. This installation also sees the return of bikes, which have slower speeds compared to typical carts, but can make tighter turns. You can't pop a wheelie though, and that is sad. And obviously these aren't just cosmetic, each driver, cart, wheel, and glider gives you different stats. So if you're that serious about Mario Kart, you can specifically build a cart that's right for you. You've got a few modes as well, you have Grand Prix, where you go up against 11 other racers and try to beat them all. Along the way, you can get items to maintain your lead or get there. High tier items are reserved for those straggling behind. Things like bullet bills that propel you forward, knocking aside anyone in your way, Starman boosts your speed and turns you invisible for a short time, and Golden Mushrooms give you repeated bursts of speed. Among the mid-tier are things like Mushrooms, giving you one-time speed bursts to dash ahead, Red Shells can home in on the person in front of you, Bomb Bombs, which can be lobbed ahead of you to explode people, and the ever-dreaded Blue Shell that seeks out the person in first place to completely smite them. Those in first place can expect slim pickings of things like Bananas that can be dropped for other people to wipe out on, or Green Shells, which are sent barreling out at a straight line, ricocheting off of walls. Although more usefully, they can be used as shields to protect yourself against red shells. But if you're lucky, you might just find yourself in possession of the ever-coveted Super Horn that can destroy blue shells right out of the sky. There's plenty of other items as well. They're all fun to use, and their distribution feels quite fair. Grand Prix also gives you various speeds to play it at. 50cc and 100cc offers a pretty laid-back experience, with speeds being manageable and the CPU being quite easy to beat. 150 keeps you on your toes, but 200cc is just absolutely crazy. You're out here going at crazy fast speeds, meanwhile the CPU's directly at your back the entire time. A really fun mode, to be sure. There's also the mirror mode, which indeed mirrors the map. All the twists and turns are now reversed, and if you spend a lot of time familiarizing yourself with the tracks, it ends up being a 
hilarious the wonky experience, as you have to fight against your own experience to win the race. It's worth noting how fair the racing feels. We never felt as though there was a race we couldn't win or that RNG screwed us over in the end. Even when we didn't manage to get first place, we never really felt like it was due to anything other than our own cock-ups. Versus race is kind of a customizable version of Grand Prix. You can have teams, change item distribution, CPU vehicles, and difficulty, and race length. It's a pretty nifty mode, although we do think they could have taken it a bit further with the customization here. Uh, things like being able to remove specific items while keeping others, changing the probability of receiving certain ones and whatnot. Maybe some other ideas would have made the mode a little more interesting, but overall, it's alright. Time Trials is a simple mode where you're just driving around the track alone, trying to get the best time. You can even go online and race against other people's playthroughs. Simple mode, but fun, and a good way to get some practice. Battle Mode returns, and I mean... Wow. Everyone remembers the disappointment that was the Wii U's battle mode, what with how it used normal racetracks as opposed to actual arenas. Well, that's fixed because we now have actual arena-styled maps, which admittedly none of them really feel new because you can tell that they were cut from the same cloth as some of the racetracks, what with their similar environments, but it's acceptable. And we get a rare Woohoo Island mention, so uh, that's great. More worthy of mention is they've added even more game modes. You have your familiar balloon battle where everyone has these balloons sticking up and out of their cart, and you have to use items to pop them and rack up points. Bomb on Blast is a variation of this, except the only items are bomb bombs, which you gotta lob at other players. A simple, but really fun mode. In Shine Thief, you have to battle for control over this star, holding onto it until the time runs out. All the while, other players are trying to take it away from you. In Coin Runners, you have to collect as much coins around the map as possible, while using items to take them from others. Renegade Roundup is an all-new mode. It's basically this cops and robbers type thing. One team has these piranha plants, at the front of their cards and they have to hunt down the other team. Catching players puts them in jail. And the goal is to catch everyone on the opposing side. Easier said than done because the other side can bust their homeboys out of the slammer to put them back in the action. The goal of the cops is to catch all the renegades before time runs out. The goal of the renegades is to survive until time runs out. Really interesting, really fun. Despite a relatively limited arena selection, it really feels like they went above and beyond for the battle mode. There's plenty of modes to fiddle around with, and they're as fun as they need to be. When all is said and done, you still have the online mode. You can connect to the internet, then race and battle other players. Remember when I said that single player races in Mario Kart 8 felt fair? Well, you can throw that out of the window. Because here, you're not racing against specifically programmed computer controlled players. Now, it's real people who want to win just as bad as you do, baby. For that reason, online races tend to be chaotic and unpredictable. They're tight and really keep you at the edge of your seat. The one thing we'd say about the races is that winning never really feels like it's based on any sort of skill. It really feels like you start the race, a mumble jumble of different things go on, and at the end of it, you might win, you might lose, you might end up in the middle, who knows? That's not to say it's completely luck based, there are certainly things you can do to increase your chances, but a lot of it does feel out of your hands. I mean, look, trying to win is still fun, but realistically, it is a bit of a roll of the die. There's not much to say about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at the end of the day. It's always been a pretty simple franchise, but an insanely fun one at that. Spectacular graphics, fun course tight controls, and chaotic gameplay is enough to carry this game to the finish line. For that reason, Jetavision's score for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is an 8.5 out of 10. As far as recommendations go, well, do you like Mario Kart? Well, uh, here's its latest installment. Even if, for whatever reason, you're not familiar with the franchise, if you're looking for something simple but really fun, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is definitely a choice to consider for your next game. This right here is the king of the casual genre. Now that we've reviewed the base Mario Kart 8 Deluxe experience, we'll go over the Booster Pack. Essentially the game's DLC, which you could pick up for $25, which adds 8 new characters. Birdo, Petey Piranha, Kamek, Wiggler, Diddy Kong, Funky Kong, Pauline, and Peachette. You know, Pichette's, uh biker suit. Definitely a satisfiable addition to the cast. But what most people are probably here for are the courses. This DLC has a whopping 48, entirely doubling the game's lineup. That does come with a few caveats, namely that most of the tracks are retro tracks, not original, newly made, but tracks taken from old games. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. A more pressing matter is how hilariously inconsistent they appear. Some of them look alright, not up to par from the base game tracks, but still alright. But then you have courses 
courses that look straight up land and unrefined. You compare these courses to what came before, and it's pretty obvious that there's a big difference in quality. It's especially disappointing, because in terms of what they chose to include, there's honestly a pretty solid lineup. We haven't played Mario Kart Tour, but hey, go-karting through iconic cities around the world sounds like a fun time. And they brought back probably the best courses from the Wii era. Mushroom Gorge, Maple Treeway, I mean Coconut Mall, hello. Other great courses like Choco Mountain, Waluigi Pinball, DK Mountain, the 3DS's Rainbow Road, which is the best Rainbow Road to date. It would have been really great to see these tracks reimagined and done justice in the modern era, but they just weren't. If I were to describe the DLC, it would be quantity over quality. And that's truly just a damn shame. We don't want to speak too soon, but without a proper Mario Kart 9, and no, this thing doesn't count, in a way, this booster pack kind of carries the torch for the Switch, and it's just kind of underwhelming. Were I to give the booster pack a rating, it would probably get a 6.5 out of 10. As far as whether or not we'd recommend it, well, look, the courses are still decently fun, you can still have a fun time with them, so we wouldn't say to avoid them entirely. More so, we just wouldn't be in a hurry to get them. I think most people are gonna buy it just so they have that 100% Mario Kart 8 Deluxe experience. And besides, if you have the premium Switch subscription, this is actually included with that, so if you have it or are planning to purchase it, it might not even be worth paying for. If nothing else, you can use it to test it out before making a permanent purchase. We'd say that $25 is worth what you pay for, so there's that. So that's gonna wrap it up for our review of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and its booster pack. Now, if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You've just watched a video from the Jetavision. If you like what you see and want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac, Cheese, the Jetavision, signing out. You all have a good one. We will